Here we go, everybody. After show, but later episode number 140. We fucking made it to episode number 140. Feels like just yesterday we were we fucking barely getting the O at F N G. I think well, I forgot what it was though. Getting our fucking podcast fucking. Yeah, really. And now here we are, fucking 140 episodes in. After show, but later, your boys D. Well, I, got, I got my shit pop. Pop way later than you did. <laughs> 50, you guys... Yeah, about 40 something, 50 something episodes in. Yeah. There we go. Here we are. Hey, but you know what? For all you motherfuckers out there, I have been on damn near 100 episodes. So I don't know what you've been doing, but uh, me and this dude over here have been holding it down. Covino and Rich, they were barely in studio this week because they were all over the country. Rich actually did some shows from, I think he did one from New Mexico, Phoenix, um, New Black York. Mexico better. Fucking, there was three shows this week, Monday, Tuesday, and or no, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. And um, only I think one of the shows, Covino was in town. I don't know. Anyway, they were all over the country. Covino was in New Jersey. Rich was in New York. Rich was in Texas. Rich New- was in New Mexico. New York. So yeah, after show, but later. Fuck, there's a lot. Let me see what happened this week. Let me see. Um, oh, you know what? Kavino made a comment this week that made me laugh because he said Melody. There was games they were playing or something when they were in Jersey, and he yeah. said Melody Melody doesn't like to play. Um, what was the quote? Nice oh, Melody there. doesn't want to play because she doesn't want to lose, and it made me laugh because I was like, that's such a a Kavino, um, trait. Kavino blood it's characteristic. Yeah, Kavino blood is. trait, right? He's like, fuck that. If I'm not gonna win, I don't want to fucking play. And, and and you know, and you know what he probably does? What? He probably practices by himself and doesn't let no one see till he's badass enough to win everything. And so fucking Melody's probably doing the same thing, whatever they're playing. She is. She's on her yeah, room gonna, fucking playing, getting all badass. Next next summer I'm gonna fuck these kids up. <laughs> that you know what? It's funny because I know Cavino kept saying, like, I want to give her experiences so when she goes back to school. When the kids are like, oh, I went to New Zealand. And then he, you know, he wants her to be able to have something cool to say. And yeah. Rich was saying he was like, oh, he was like, when I was young, when the kids went like to different countries and shit, like those were like the rich kids. And they, it was like weird, you know, like he was like, we went to Hershey Park or we went to this or that. It was it was only weird because he didn't do it. But it was the thing is, though, Doug, think about this. It's because. He wasn't in fucking L.A. and they were, right. you know, Bro, lower middle class or middle class or whatever. Well, let, let me let me ask you a question. What's up? You're in Yuma, you're in Yuma, which is which is a border town. I'm not. I'm in Fresno. Well, now I'm in in uh, Lompoc, but still Lompoc Central Coast, Fresno Central Valley. Everybody goes to Mexico, bro. Yeah. Like I mean, they might not hit New Zealand, but everybody hits another country. Yeah. Everybody. No. Who doesn't? No. When, when I heard though, when I heard him say that. You know who doesn't hit Mexico? Huh. The Davises. When I heard him say that, he was like, "What? That was like the that was the weird kid." I'm like, "Rich, they're in. You guys are in L.A. now. It's it's a different. It's not your little small town that you were from, and Franklin well, Square or freaking even well, Union or some well, suburb, you know." But bro, can, let me let me say this. We we love Rich Davis. We do. So I'm gonna say this as polite as possible because. You know, I'm trying to be pro rich these days, right? You had a blue jazz mug. You had them goofy fucking Chris Sabo goggles. Mm-hmm. And you lost your virginity to a couch. Who's the weird kid? He admits he didn't become cool until college, bro. And the band was cool. Do you remember that? <laughs> Yeah. So so what makes him qualify to judge anybody as a child? No, what what cracks me up? Um, Doug, I never thought about it. Have you ever thought about what color the couch was? Do you think he went for a white couch? Or do you think he no, went for like a more Yeah, maybe. Maybe went a for tan a brown... couch. Uh... Oh, a tan couch. I think Lane Bryant has a couch color <laughs> named Sarah. Sarah. Uh, you don't think he went for that Lizzo couch? He went for the Sarah, bro. Uh, I don't know what a Sarah is, but it's kind of code for Sarah. Oh, a Sarah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Fuck. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not with it. I'm trying to catch up. But um, but yeah, well, tomato, you better catch up. Let me see. Um, okay, they they actually this week they were talking about because Cavino's back or he was for part of the week back in Jersey, you know, got mm-hmm. to see some yeah. family, 
And they went out for a Taylor they went Ham. out for a big dinner where they saw a lot of the family. And Covino said they, they had that. exceptional service. So they were talking about when you tip, how do you how do you really make this kid know like that he had a, did a kick ass job? And th- they kept throwing out like Covino was saying, "Oh, I don't have any cash on me," and my dad got it. Um, you know, he got the meal for everybody and this and this, but I was like, dog, if he was that ex- ex- exceptional, what I probably would have done was I would have hit up that kid and been like, Hey dude, give me your fucking, um, your Venmo or your, your cash app or something. And I'll right. fucking throw you an extra 20 bucks for the table or whatever, you know, you know, the, you, have you ever been in the food service industry where tips were a good chunk of your income? Me? No, but I did work wow. in a restaurant, but I wasn't the, um, I was never a server. So well, I, I had a bunch of homies that they, it was a good, you know. I'll, I'll tell you, well, my first job was working for me and Ed's pizza as a little delivery driver. And uh, you know how you could tell me that you like my service. Give me a big tip. I don't care if you're mad at me. You can give me a dirty look. I'm going to judge how you like the service by the amount of the tip you give me. Yeah. And, and nothing else matters. Your kind words are not paying my bills. I appreciate them and they're nice. And thank you very much. But, you know, I'd like to go buy a pack of blunts and some products. So <laughs> if you gave me 20, 20, $30, it should, I'd appreciate it much more. I promise. Doug, you know what I always felt like was the douchiest thing ever What's is that? if you ever like when in our younger days, when we would like go to the strip club and shit, it's crazy when you would see like a dude put like one doll, like he would be sitting at the stage put like one dollar and fold it up like a tent like that dollar like i was like dog what the fuck do you think she's gonna come and like see that dollar and be like oh fuck this dude's fucking dope or some shit like i don't they would put like one dollar up there like he, he i really love his origami like i'm yeah no shit huh because i'm like i'm like okay what are you doing do you want are you trying to get her attention so she could come pick it up and then you're gonna start giving it to her or some shit or I, well, I don't me, fucking, I don't know what it was, but well, then I got to ask you, I got to quiz you on some stuff because we kind of go, we, we, we talked about this on previous episodes that we go about that whole situation a little bit different. Yeah. So what is a uh, protocol in that situation? When you're up, like what, when you're sitting at the stage? Yeah. You're at the tip rail. You don't give dollars. What do you get? Yeah. Give? Yeah. You put, I mean, you put a few dollars on the stage, you know, you're talking to your homie, you're drinking your beer. Your, your whatever drink you have, your fucking just you know when she throwing some when she when she when she butterfly kisses your face with her kuka, are you putting a one, a couple of ones, a five or a ten? Ah, uh, no, fucking fuck that. I'll never have any bigger bills than ones. If I have five dollars, it's fucking because it's gonna be five singles. So no, but I'll fucking throw, you know, five times the bacteria, bro. Hey, whatever, whatever. I, I, Doug, you know what? I just feel like that shit. Listen, I always wondered why shit happens in my life. Right. Like, why did this happen? Or why did this happen? Now I know why I I, I spent most uh, fucking I, I, I why well, I put a lot of money into the clubs and shit. And it was because, like you said, five times the bacteria. We did some good. Right. I lived through the freaking I lived through COVID. So, you know how you mean you were always sending like, you know, now that I'm over here, because last year we would send those same uh, temperature shots. For real. The weather, they, we the weather mirrored rapper. each other. Right. They did. They were close. You you still were a little bit hotter being out there with the cactuses and whatnot, um, but it wasn't by much. It was, you know, probably close to the three degrees. Some days it might have been 10, but if I'm 105, you're probably 110 or 111. Mm. But we, we were close. You know, we'd always send those things back and back and forth. Well, we still do. And, and you send me those shots of yeah. the triple digits. Oh, look, it's 106. You're like, cool. It's fucking 56 over here. Yeah, bro, and I, and I send you those. Well, it was funny because our conversations that we have with that and the text messages came to fruition uh, last weekend. The homie Tip Dog came to visit. Woodchuck came to visit. So Tip Dog gets here, right? And I'm telling him the whole time, I'm like, look, bro, bring a hoodie, right? And for some we're worth triple digits, you're not even – you can't even fucking imagine yeah. a hoodie. You're not thinking hoodie till November. Yeah. If November. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, really. You're you're not even thinking buying hoodies right now. Like when you go on eBay and they're slash forty percent, it means nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm I'm saving forty percent to wear something in six months. Yeah. So, but here it's not like that. So, anyways, told the homie to bring a hoodie. Um, I think he did, but I don't know how much he believed me. So he shows up in a fuck t-shirt, shorts, and flip flops, bro, complaining how cold it was. Because when he left Fresno, that's 
what he had to wear to be comfortable. But when he gets here, all he did was complain for the first half hour how cold he was because he's in flip flop shorts and a t shirt. It was fucking great. Doug, well, why that? I mean, there there's his first problem. He's wearing flip flops in public. <sighs> that that to I'm, I I do that in Hawaii. If I'm on vacation, and there's a beach and sand. I'll do it. Um, but I definitely don't do it around. You don't, you don't do it in Lompoc? No. Yeah. God, no. Yeah, but Doug, it's funny, though, because, I mean, I guess he was like, nah, fuck it, it won't be cold. But I feel like if I was going to go somewhere like that, I would probably check the weather over there if I'm not familiar with the town, like, eh, just to be sure. And then if For you're sure, telling me, that. if you're telling me, hey, uh, bring a hoodie, I might be like, ah, whatever. This fool thinks I'm a bitch. I don't need no fucking hoodie, but I would probably still bring it. You know, I would probably bring you know, it and leave it in the car until I got there. And then I judge for myself. But to be without it. Oh, that sucks. Really bad. You know, you know, what the fucking funny part about the whole situation was, bro. Mm. First of all, tell me, look at your watch right now. And and what's the weather where you're at? What's how hot is it? Uh, It's 97 right now. And what time is it? 1030 there? 930? 930. Yeah. 9.30 here too, right? Yeah. Here's 57. Well, when Tip Dog showed up, bro, it was only about 5.45. Yeah. So you're fucking 97 degrees at fucking 9.30 at night. He shows up shivering by 6, 6 p.m. Dog, bro. and today was a fucking cooler day. It was 106. And the only reason uh-huh. why it was a cooler day is because it fucking rained. Oh, shit. And it was still 106? Yeah, it got up to 106 today. Oh, that's a nightmare, no? Yeah, we had a low of 84. While it was fucking raining. Bro, and, and even in Fresno, as I look at my shit, it's 90 degrees there right now. Yeah, right now? Yeah, it's 90 yeah, in Fresno. We got seven degrees on them, but that's it. But that's what we talked about. You know, it's about three to ten degrees. You know what, though, Doug? You know what people always say that I think is kind of, eh, I, I don't think it's that that crazy. It's a lot what? of times people say that conversations about the weather is like bullshit small talk where... If you don't know somebody, oh, what are you going to talk about? Doug, I fucking have known you for like over a year already. And right. <laughs> we're going to. We always talk about the fucking and weather. Doug, we talk about it all the fucking time. Like, and we talk about so much shit. And Doug, I was talking to fucking um, last weekend. I was talking to my buddy, one of my fucking best friends in the whole world, fucking Luis. Doug, right. and we were talking about. Shout out, Luis. We were talking about the weather. And I was like, Doug, I fucking like. I've talked to him about more shit. I'm like, we know more shit about each other than anybody in the fucking world. And we were still talking about it. So I know. But you know what, though? That's a- it's hot lately. Yeah. And you're in a, you're in a hot ass town. And you know what, bro? I, I hate to tell. Again, this kind of goes out to the people that that never experienced anything of any extreme. Maybe you live. You know, I don't know what your deal is. And I don't, to be honest, I don't care. You want to leave a comment? Cool. I'll fucking go back and forth with you. But I really don't give a fuck. But the thing is, with dirt when, shots. It's a, when it's when it's. Bro, when it's 97 at fucking 9.30 at night. That's something to talk, talk about. about. You fucking talk about yeah, shit Doug, like that. Yeah, for real. And your first, your first summer away when you can tell the homie, hey, ha, 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 it's 57, fucker. Yeah. You talk about exactly. it. Exactly. Or, or, Doug, like, even, like, fucking, I'll be leaving my mom's pad, and it's, like, 103, right? And it'll be, like, fucking 10 o'clock at night. And it'll I'll even bad. tell her, I'll be like, fuck, can you believe this shit? This is fucking nuts. You know, it it is like so. I, and I didn't let that comment slip by. Speaking of Dirk shots, I want him to send me a selfie with a current episode of the National Enquirer. Uh, one of them tabloids, the Sun. I don't know. Get you, get you something, Dirk. I, he hit me up on Instagram. And uh, if he's a real boy, I welcome it. Right <laughs> on, Dirk. Uh, shout out to Dirk and fucking um, I'm Key for always fucking commenting on our YouTube shit. And all the fucking, sure. all the Shout regulars, out. uh, fucking the funkiest of monkeys. And Doug, fucking Joey in Texas hit me up earlier, and he was saying that he wanted to come on this week. So I told him, I was like, our shit is kind of... Te, vato? I told him... Our, las pilas. I was like, our shit is kind of like, we don't have like a set time or date or whatever, but I was like, this is kind of around when we record. And I was like, I'll hit you up before we do to see if you're available. So I hit him up today, yeah. and I was like, hey, are you good in like 20 minutes? Which turned out to be like an hour. <laughs> but i was like an hour and no an hour and yeah it was, it was like an hour above the fucking All time right. so i was like are you and he fucking he still hasn't texted me back or actually come on joey i got a text from carl reinhardt mm-hmm. hey i got him down to one or two good videos i'm gonna go ahead and call it out <laughs> carl reinhardt just hit me up have you ever seen Smokey and the bandit 
We, not in detail, but I know who fucking Burt Reynolds is and that big old fucking mustache oh, he's got. Oh, okay. See, I was way off. I was thinking it was a cartoon. You thought it was fucking Friday Smokey. No, I thought Smokey and the... Don't lie. I thought I thought Smokey and the Bandit was kind of like a Tom and Jerry type of thing. Oh, it wasn't a cartoon? No, no, it was a movie for it. was. It, they had a badass fucking Trans Am. I never a trans watched it. What? I can't tell you a, a Trans Am, bro. A Firebird. Oh, they that? had shit. Oh, a tr- okay. I I thought I thought you were talking about something different. I was like, holy shit! They had that in the movie. They said Transformer. Right? They had that shit in the seventies. No, nah, it was. You a, know, it was a badass. Hey, you know what? It was a badass Trans Am. Um, what? I've noticed a lot of bigger YouTube channels censoring their fucking um. Their their podcasts are in shit on the on YouTube when they're talking, it'll be cutting out like the bad words and shit. I'm mm-hmm. like, our shit will probably get shadow banned just for saying the word trans because we said trans am transformers. I thought you were gonna say that you noticed I was using bigger words, but fuck, I guess it was about fucking shadow uh-huh. ban. <laughs> I did notice there were some good ones, like you said. Um, Thanks, bro. Good looking. Well, fuck, I don't know. I can't think of anything, but I I, fu- I think I fucked up your story. You're in the middle of telling a story or something? No, Reinhardt. He's, he shoots good ones. Like, you know this fucker? Like, because he did, bro. I'm going to call you out, Reinhardt. Sorry, I've been nice for about a month and a half, two months. You sent me way too many videos in the beginning, but I like the videos you send me now. Keep it to one <laughs> or two a day and we're straight. <laughs> but the one he sent me today was dope, bro. It was funny as shit. They were somewhere, and they dude had a ball in his hand. And I'm not talking about baseball, basketball, football. He had his nut. He had a nut in his hand, and he stuck that fucker in a mousetrap little by little until it snapped on his ass. And I was like, I- oh, man, are you serious? Oh, he didn't send that to you? He probably did, but I just haven't opened it yet. Did he, did oh. he send it on Instagram? Because I think he sent two on Instagram today. No, he got me on TikToks. Oh, yeah. Um, it was it, 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 it hurt my ball. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. Dog. I'm, I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not trying to watch all that either. It was pretty fucking manly, bro, for someone to do some shit like that. Well, I mean, obviously the video speaks for itself, but he got some nuts. Oh, let me see. Oh, dog, I have I have one thing that somebody approached Rich and they were kind of being kind of aggressive. Like some homeless dude was like, hey, give me your phone. Right. What the rich? Yeah. What do you do in a situation like where somebody say somebody approaches you and they're like, hey, uh, can I use your phone? And maybe they even look a little sketchy. What or you know, I, hey, I need to call somebody. This and this and this. We're we're gonna play a game. Okay, what's the game? I'm gonna have you ask that same question. Okay. And we're gonna start with the first location being Lompoc. Ask me again. Okay. Okay. You're in Lompoc, right? Some somebody walks up to you, a little sketchy looking, and says, "Hey, uh, can I use your phone real quick?" Man, fuck you. <laughs> okay, you're in Fresno. Somebody walks up to you, kind of sketchy. Hey, can I use your phone real quick? Hey, bro, you better get the fuck away from me and mind your business. You ain't using shit. Back your ass up. <laughs> you know what I did when? Okay, um, about a year ago, I lived in this apartment complex, and this girl walked up to me, looking kind of questionable. And she, like, as a dude or a chick? What do you think she was? Which which way did she lean? What do you mean? More dude or more chick? No, she, question. No, she was questionable. Like she was gonna, like she could rob me or fucking oh, pop okay. me in the fucking head, and I was gonna be dead. Oh, you know. Sorry, bro. So she looked That's a little sketchy, good. and she walked up. Did she have sketchers? Uh, I don't, I, I don't know. She and she had told me she was like, hey, uh, she was like, can I use your phone because I'm waiting for a ride and I just want to see where he's at, and mm-hmm. I was like. I'll call for you. you. No, I told her. I go, I'll call for you. I go, what's the number? So I put that shit on speaker and I fucking called it and I held it right there. And then she was like, you could tell she didn't think I was going to do that because the dude answered like, hello? Like, who the fuck is this? And she was like, hey, I'm borrowing somebody's phone. Are you almost here or some shit? And you could tell he was like, what, bitch? Like, why don't you call me from your phone or some shit? You know, it was just like he you could tell the dude was like, what? But I was like, fuck that. I was like, if you need to really get a hold of somebody here, you could fucking yell right to them fucking here. You know, I'm not going to fucking. So to me, I felt like that is sometimes the. The fucking move if but the way Rich said Rich said some dude walked up and was like, give me your phone. He was not Rich was like, he didn't even ask, hey, dude, uh, I need I'm fucking, you know, I just ran out of gas. Do you mind if I call somebody or 
he would or hey my fucking car broke down it was just like hey give me your phone he probably looked at yeah. rich and thought he was a fucking bitch you know so he yeah, probably sure. walked up yeah. and was like hey give me your fucking phone and thought rich and, okay you know what he do what he do uh apparently he fucking didn't didn't give it to him at all i don't think i might have fucking missed the end of that story so <laughs> if he fucking if he if you guys know the end of that story leave it in the comments yeah, I wouldn't have gave that dude my phone. Fuck that. Yeah, especially if it's some questionable. I mean, if it was a chick, that's what I was like. Ah, I'm fuck not giving anybody called. my phone. No, but I'm saying the way I said, like, here, just fucking call them then. But I'm like some dude walking up and just being like, give me your phone. I'm like, motherfucker, get out of here. Hey, and that, it took 2022, though, I think you can still ride the coattails of COVID. And that's when you like, get us a mascara or a top, topa boca. You know what? Fuck you. I was, um, when I was in Tucson, there's this dude that, uh, that people refer to as Negro. That's his nickname, right? So um, this dude is like all into aliens and shit. And he has mm-hmm. like fucking this telescope and shit. This dude's Mexican. But, he- but hold on. What's up? You got to help me. Before before you get into the meat and the potatoes of the story, what does all into aliens even mean? Because I believe in aliens, but I'm not all into them. So bridge that gap. This please. dude has a telescope, right? It's like a crazy ass telescope. And mm-hmm. he was showing us pictures of pictures that he's taken with because you know now shit's all advanced i guess you can take pictures on your phone from your telescope or some shit so he was showing us pictures that he had taken of shit that was like oh like this was look at this shit this shit looks like a ufo and this shit looks like and then he started talking about frequencies and shit and how after you like see an alien you might get this frequency and all this shit so that's what i mean by all into aliens well who gave him the cheat code bro how does he know that shit <laughs> i i have no idea was it up down up down left right i don't know A-B-B but to like start but this is what i'm thinking is what? i do feel like there's shit going on around us that we can't see oh absolutely. so so that's what i was gonna ask you do you think that there's like different like like he did he did say different frequencies and shit and i kind of think that too i kind of think that we're in tuned as like human beings into like one fucking like frequency or whatever and i feel like maybe people that like not like a psychic like miss cleo call me now but people that really right. do have like intuition like that and shit i feel like are kind of tuned in you know like you were talking about the bigote right like fucking uh no for sure right so if, if husky nipple you know, tuned it a little too much to the left. Maybe fucking the dude over here isn't being able to hear the same shit or see the same shit. His, his right nipple points down if they're not. So even. I feel like some people are in tune with different frequencies and shit, and and do kind of see some other shit that maybe certain people aren't seeing. Um, his explanation about all that shit, I was not too. I didn't think it was like, I didn't, I whatever. I I wasn't vibing with it, but I do think it's somewhat. And you know what? And I think. When people do psychedelics like LSD and fucking you know shrooms oh, and all this shit, them. I feel yeah, like like you kind of you kind of become a little more in tune with different some of those different frequencies, you know. So I don't know if it's necessarily you encountering an alien and now you can or whatever, but right. I kind of feel like sometimes people are just a little more in tune with different shit like that. So do you think well, that kind of shit is like? bullshit do you kind of feel it a little bit do you kind of believe i i think i definitely think number one humans can't stand the unknown and so for them that's why they come up with hypothesis and fucking you know things that they 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 feel that are mandatory explanations of the unknown because they're so unsettled with not knowing so we we almost have to feel like we know or have a hope or conclusion or hypothesis or some bullshit right so Number one, let's just get that straight. That's why, you know, it, religion and politics are like gangs, right? Because everyone has to be right and be fighting for the good and, you know, religion and God and different religions. Like, it's crazy shit. So, but with that being said, I absolutely think we don't know everything. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are energies and vibrations and, you know, shit that we can't even explain, right? Like, we can't even explain it in frequencies, there has to be time travel. There has to be a lot of stuff. And, and don't quote me and say, oh, Kukui believes in time, time travel. No, I'm just not ruling it out because I don't know better. You know what I'm saying? No, 100%. And so all these things, to me, are a possibility. 
And with that being said, there's this chick on TikTok that I follow. I'm going to go ahead and play a little something for her. But she always talks about the energy and that when you die, you don't go anywhere and your family and your friends are there waiting for you and and you become an energy. And 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 I don't know, man. I don't know. I know that I believe what my mama taught me because obviously I know no better or no different. Mm. But at the same time, um, I ain't died yet. Right. So that ain't been confirmed. They call that shit faith and and, and a belief for a reason. Yeah. And sure. so I still listen to what other people have to say, even if I, even if I'm not 100 percent on board, it's still interesting to me. Um, I do think there are frequencies. I don't think that, um, you know, we just die and go away, you know, and, and I don't know if they say dogs can hear things and they can feel things that we can't. So I definitely think it's a possibility. I don't need to know eat one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't close down that door. And that's why I don't say yes, for sure. There is I'm open. What do you think about mm-hmm. the theory of, you know, if you look at us versus like the early form of men, we're a lot less hairy, you know, where our heads are a little bigger. We're fucking, you know, um, we're, we're evolving and, changing actually if you look at like we're, the evolution chart we're getting right? way bigger bro so we're getting way bigger so what are you thinking what do you think about the theory of aliens that have you know the common alien that you see if you fucking ask a kid to draw an alien right the, the okay. big head the fucking little body the fucking hairlessness the big eyes whatever do you think what do you think about the theory of that could be possibly us in the future maybe checking on like us from the past or something like aliens are basically the future of humans. Have you ever thought about that? Well, let me, let me ask you this, bro. What's, what's the definition of an alien? Um, my uncle, <laughs> hey, oh. not, not bad, Pe- not that not kind? Pedro, but, oh, but, but okay. uh, not Don Coyotes. Okay. But, uh, no, but for reals, I mean, what is the actual, if you looked at Webster's dictionary, I mean, I don't need you to quote it word for word, but what is the definition of an alien? Um, noun um oh i was pulling the webster dictionary no but i think something that's not i think something that's not of earth right like like not a non-earthling non-fucking fish non-fucking human non-ape non-zebra you know something from something that's not from earth basically so so would that qualify us as aliens for they say we landed on the moon? We got all our fucking junk in space. Like, I mean, I don't know, bro. We're the ones with the space station and all the bullshit. Doesn't that kind of make us the aliens? We're the ones trying to fucking explore and try to find another planet. Two different, and all two different planets bullshit. we could be, you know? So so then, then again, I mean, it, you got to look at it like this. With all the galaxies and, and, you know, that are out there in the solar systems, bro, we're like... In reality, a speck of sand on a big ass beach. And if we're already fucking having satellites, bro, I live in, in Lompoc. SpaceX is launching those fucking star bands or Starlinks or whatever the fuck they got cracking once or twice a month. Okay. So we got all kind of junk up there. And I don't know how true this is. Again, I don't know exactly. I don't read too much up on it. But from what I hear that at some point, bro, in the next 20 or 30 years, they're going to have so much shit in orbit. It's going to be hard to leave this most sucker. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a shitload of satellites up there already. It's going to be like traffic, be to, right? Right. It's, it's going to be hard to get through that shit. So, again, if we got all our shit in space, we got motherfuckers that live in space for a year, two years at a fucking time. We take them food. We do all this. We do all that. Don't that technically qualify us as aliens as well when we do that type shit dog can you imagine if you went up in space because you know how like they have shit about the earth rotates differently or some Ooh. shit and you know how oh. you age differently in space yeah what's up what, what you, hit, hit, hit me with it mine wasn't that hard i got a hard hitter no you know what hold on real quick this is gonna be a good one all right All right. all right, man. Check it out. Two astronauts, right? Wow. Sorry, bro. Oh, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Oh, fucking shit. Sorry, dude. I didn't all mean right. that. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> hey, it is, a, it, is a, it is at Oreos. Oh, my goodness. Okay, fuck. I know you don't burn, but I had it. Had to okay, it okay. Um, but no, check it out for real shit on some real shit. So let's say that fucking two people in the space station got down, right? They got down. They're up there for 18 months. 
you know, week one, fucking Betty Joe is fucking attracted to Otis and shit, right? And they get that shit in. They figure out a way and Otis sticks his fucking wiener in there and boom, million babies, right? And she gets pregnant. Does that make the baby an alien because it was born at the space station? Or it was, it was, it wasn't conceived. born on Earth. It was, no, but it was. But say they even had it on on in the fucking in. in Either space. or, let's just say it was it was conceived up there. The birth happened up there. Yeah, then what's your answer? But what if it was just conceived up there, like four or five months before they came home, and she was able to carry it all the way through the atmosphere and land at the Cape Canaveral in Florida, bro? Did that make it an alien baby? What would what what where where would it reside, bro? Where was where was it born at? What how would you do that? I don't know. That's a good question because, yeah, I don't know. Fuck, dog, you're fucking hitting me with all this shit. Where I'm like, really thinking. I think this is a, a alien heavy show because I you really got me thinking about. Well, because dog, think about it. Even if the the baby was conceived in space, like who knows what kind of other shit is going on up in space? Well, what, what kind of physics? Yeah, and, right. Maybe that fucker comes out like 13 feet tall when it's done. Or it becomes an adult in like two years. <laughs> Doug, I don't know. You, bro, imagine they age, you had that baby think about in, it. in two years. They're like, hey, dad. Or is that work and paying bills at year three? <laughs> Can you imagine Ben? Fucking Ben want fucking job. He kicks, he's, a, he's about to kick Rich's ass. Oh, for real? At age three? Oh, my goodness. Age- yeah, Doug. That, no, can you it. imagine, though, that? Like, for real? Like, if they came back and they're had the kid and literally at like two years old, it was as big as a fucking 18 year old kid. And it could fly. <laughs> and it could fly. <laughs> hey, if we're imagining, huh? Why not? Let's give that motherfucker. Hey, fuck, I'll, just, I'll just take you back up there. Fucker. Get on my back. We'll go right back. Uh, we don't need those fucking space shuttle. For real. Let's go back. I'm going to go make some other fucking kids. And Oh man, that's crazy. Hey, but check it out. So look but back on that fucking frequency <laughs> shit. Listen to this shit, dude. Tell me, tell me what the fuck you think. I'm gonna play this shit. This is on TikTok. Her name's Christina, psychic medium, and she, dude, she has me thinking. I don't know. You guys leave your comments, but I'm gonna play it right here. You ready? Yeah. Do spirits eat or sleep in the afterlife? I like both. My name is Christina, and I speak to those who have crossed over. Spirits don't need to eat or sleep because they don't have a physical body that requires these needs. This can be hard for us to grasp because right now we're in a physical human form. But as spirits, we are purely energetic beings. Some spirits do come through showing themselves eating a particular food, but that's if they really enjoy doing this activity in life. They can recreate certain activities that they enjoyed in the spiritual realm through the power of thought, but it is by no means required. There is also no time in the spiritual realm. So what feels like many years on earth, it's actually a brief moment in the spiritual realm. So not only are your loved ones seeing everything that's going on in your life and are with you all the time, the but they also know that they'll see you again very soon. Do you that's s- scary, bro. Think about that when you're jerking off alone. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, oh, bro. Oh, man. You're fucking scandalous, Doug. Uh, you're watching a fucking risque video, bro, and your family's like, Mijo, no! <laughs> oh, my God. Really, man? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shit's crazy. It's just, just crazy, though, Doug. Think about it. Like, um oh you know what this is like like think about it we have a listener who is a favorite of ours miss funky monkey Miss Funky, and monkey. one of her daughters makes like frequent um i guess there's there's been freak i don't know even know how to word it dog in english but and i guess frequently one of funky monkey's children talks mm-hmm. to the dead grandma Really? Yeah, and it's not like it's not like a one-off thing where they're like, "Oh, I guess she does it often." So, I I don't know. know. So so we might does the does the, does the child embrace it or does I you know what I think positively from, or neutrally or I think I think she just doesn't um get it. No, I just don't think she thinks it's a big deal. Like, oh yeah, I talked to grandma, whatever, whatever. No, that's cool. Hell and yeah. um, so I think and I think Funky Monkey and her her man are people that kind of encourage it like that you know they're not like oh stop that you're being silly or you know they really right. do kind of like oh really well that's good you know that you keep like a good relationship with grandma or whatever and so yeah. why not the recipe to come pie bro you know what we're gonna have to bring funky monkey on and, and have her give us the full details because i could have gotten that story completely wrong i just remember one or two details from it so 
That's pretty awesome though, man. But yeah, so if you have any any experiences of of beyond the living, let us know in the comments, whatever one of yours. I try we'll talk I about try, it next bro. week too, or we could talk about it in a future episode, you know. Well, as a youngster, I did do some of those things that you talked about earlier in the show. And uh, and I've stayed at like Haunted Play. I've stayed at the Sir Francis Drake Hotel. I think it was like room 1310. I stayed at the Mendocino Hotel that was supposed to be haunted. Sat at table two and six or whatever it is. Did lots of haunted stuff. Stayed at the uh, Hotel Eureka, I think was one. Um, bunch of them, man. I stayed and I, I would set camcorders out and all kind of shit. And I never really seen nothing uh, myself. Shelter Cove was kind of haunted. I think I've told some stories about stuff like that, but I've never seen nothing, man. I just felt vibes. So yeah, we want those comments because I'm curious, man. I, I do believe it's possible. I felt the energy, but I haven't seen any silhouettes or nothing like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's just I think it's crazy um, that people I feel like those experiences aren't much different than people's like, quote unquote, like alien experience, you know? I just feel like, again, like you're in tune with something different that most people are not. So if you are, you know, well, you just pay attention. Yeah, it's if you think about it, right, like even look at people. I don't know if you've had any friends or you, you yourself have experienced this, but like I've known people, myself included, that as a youngster with no responsibilities could smoke as much weed as it just didn't matter, bro. There was no such thing as being too high. There was something called hell of stones. But it was never that you couldn't do any. There was never nothing you couldn't operate your normal function if needed, right? Like you could still do what you had to do. You could take your test. You could drive, perform your job, do whatever you needed, right? But you were just fucked up. But I think that once the responsibility. <laughs> to me, that sounds so crazy because I'm like, I'm just thinking, like you said, you could do all your shit. I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it's just, that sounds nuts to me. No, it's true. I mean, you know, as a stoner, you're not, you're not in annihilated you know what i'm saying you're not fucking or inhibited or no bullshit like that you're not you're not incapacitated by any means you're just a little hit, hit. that's it and so you can do whatever you need to do but i think that once you hit a level of having responsibilities that changes so now you can be too high for certain situations because you don't want people to think bad of you or you don't want to get fired because you got to make rent or mortgage or whatnot and so that changes a little bit Versus when you live at home with mommy and daddy. Yeah. And so with that being said, that whole experience changes. You go from just having a blast to now you get anxiety from the shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. I, mean? I, I just, I don't know, dog. It's just crazy. I, I feel like, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, I didn't, I didn't get one. Yes. I didn't get one thought out in like three sentences right now, but. I just feel like it's crazy because I feel like there's certain things that I'm more in tune with when it comes to even sleeping and dreaming. I dr I remember I don't dream. I bro. remember 90% of my dreams and a lot of like the there was two things that I dreamt. I told you the Warriors winning. Dreamt. I dreamt it. No, I I had a and it's usually the like the day before an event. Was it was it Dreamon Green? Well, I had I had a dream. Can you give me can you give me 10 seconds real quick? Yeah, go ahead. And shout out to my pops. This was back in the day. This was his fucking beer. The old school banquets. If you ain't old school, I don't know what to tell you. I love me some Corones, but uh, what is it? Not I'm wet. Not I'm wet my whistle with the old school gold label Coors. Dog, you know what? Do they still make? You know, what my grandpa used to drink when I was a kid. Uh, the party ball. He passed in 07. So, Doug, I don't even know if they still make this shit. Do they still make um Oli Gold, like Olympia Gold and shit? Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Really. I don't drink it, but yeah, they may. I mean, I would drink it, but I don't. That, but yeah, you know what? It. I need to buy like a six pack of that shit. That was my grandpa's shit when we were kids. We would even like, if it was like his birthday or something, and you know, my mom wanted like the kids to walk in with something, we'd walk in with like a 12 pack, but wrapped oh, with like great. a bow on it. You know, so we'd be like, you know what, bro? And those were good times. You know what? This <laughs> right now, I hate to say it, dude. I really, 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 really hate to say it. We are in some, some, uh, some times where that would be considered unacceptable yeah your little grandson walking and giving you a 12 pack of beer yeah like, it was and that's, and, and, it bro, was that's a beautiful fucking thing that's a beautiful thing yeah. bro that that's a that's a thing of love right there bro i love hearing those stories yeah and and if you disagree fucking leave your bullshit wrong comments in the fucking box so i can talk shit to you later yeah it was and it was cool because you know my grandpa was like he wasn't even like a heavy drinker he would drink like maybe two to three beers and um but that was his shit he would 
and it's cool because I can still see him right there on my fucking grandma's um little like porch area sitting on the bench. Fucking he would smoke like two cigarettes and drink like two or three beers just like every day after work. And that was just his yeah. little routine. And um, it's just crazy. Like you think about that shit now, like that was just like that was what grandpa did. Right. He smoked a couple cigarettes and drank beer. Uh, and it wasn't even like he was crazy about it. And so when it was birthday time or something, we would take him a 12 pack. It was just kind of like, yeah. Oh, fuck. Sorry, little, little Chapo wanted to make a fucking guest appearance. Okay. He likes you, bro. Look at Daniel. <laughs> look at Daniel, Chops. Yeah. Bite his dick. Bite him in the dick. Chapo, look. Chapo. There he is. Chapo. There he goes. Chapo. Look. There you go, Chop. Hey, look. There he goes. He sees you now. All right. Get your ass down. <laughs> we got to finish the show, motherfucker. Uh, yeah. But yeah, very, but yeah, that's, very, that's dope. very spirit heavy, very uh, alien heavy this episode. But do you know, yeah. Doug, because um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think that Negro had said a couple of things about different encounters and shit like with I'm not sure him. I think I think it was more his brother that had shit encounters and shit. Have you ever known anybody who had claimed to have an encounter? No, no. But I got a really good friend who claims not to have had an encounter. And I was there with him that night. And I disagree. Who claimed to not have had an encounter? Yes. He said he didn't, and you're saying he did. Absolutely. Okay, tell me the story on this. I will tell you his name off the record because I don't know if he wants me to say okay, it on just the tell record. Tell me the story. Um he's a he's pretty famous in the city. Yeah. And uh I, I won't say the profession, but he's really fucking famous. You know, he's 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 up there, probably I don't know couple hundred thousand, maybe half a million fucking IG followers. Yeah. So, I mean, he's up there. He does good work. Leave it at that. Anyways, with that being said, some of those things you spoke about earlier in the show, we were on one of them. Not the kind you, that was liquid, but the kind that grew out of the ground. Yeah. And we were, we were at a Grateful Dead concert. And when he listens to this, he knows exactly this is about his ass. So, anyways, we're five deep in a Volkswagen hippie square back. And uh, you know how I kind of told you I clicked up with everybody? Yeah. This is one of those perfect examples. Uh, he was my homie. So me and him fucking out of the five people in the van, the dude who was driving was my homie from like second grade. I had another homie in there and this dude that was kind of like a homie of everybody else but me. So we go to this Grateful Dead show and me and my buddy click up. And that was like the first time we really hung tough, ate some mushrooms, fucking smoked. You hung tough? Kinda, I didn't even know you were a uh, fan we, of New Kids on the Block. Bro, I, I mean, I'm not, but I did hang tough. I mean, it, it is what it is. So with that being said, we hung tough. And uh, for the weekend, we kind of, you know, we first night we slept in the park. And then the second night we had a homie that let 20 of us sleep on the floor in his fucking Best Western in Mountain View, California. So we go up to this fucking hotel room. And as we're going up there, we lose homie. He's We get there and he's gone. And I'm like, what the fuck, right? And I'm shrooming. So I'm like, dude, I got to go find my buddy, right? It's my new buddy. We've been hanging out for a couple of days now and shit. Like, I can't let him get ate by the wolves or whatever the fuck's going on down there. I got to go. I'm, I'm shrooming, right? I got to go figure it out. This is madness. Something ain't right. And he's gone. And I'm just like, we got we to gotta figure this out, dude. He can't. We're 15. He can't just disappear in the middle of the night. Yeah. So we go out there. We look by the car. We look by everyone's car. We're looking fucking under the car. We're doing this shit, right? And I swear to you, dude, I went out there like 10 times that night and he's nowhere to be seen. And uh, at some point you just call off the search. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And you're like, fuck it. I got to get some sleep, dude. I don't know. You have to figure this shit out. So I go back to the room after going out there like nine or 10 times with no luck and fucking, you know, knock out. Everyone's kind of worried about the guy and fucking, I mean, bro, he was gone all night. And I go back out there in the morning and shit, and I don't know what time, six, seven, eight, whatever the fuck it was, go back out there, and he's on the little grass patch next to the car asleep. And I personally looked there like nine or ten times. Like, I looked there myself. I'm not taking no one's word for it. It ain't what so-and-so said. Like, I looked there because, like I said, we hung out all weekend, So, and I was shrooming, so I wanted to make sure that, you know, I didn't leave my buddy behind and shit. And he was not there, dude, and in the morning he was. And fucking uh, <laughs> that is the weakest shit ever. You don't think he fucking could have went and laid there 
got back from whatever he was doing and then fucking just went and laid in the grass? Okay, yeah, absolutely. But let me tell you something else. He's an artist, okay? Uh And he draws some trippy art. And if I just only showed you some of his art today, I think you would say, oh, Oh yeah, I think I've fucking, seen he, it. I think I know who you're talking about now. Okay. Did did he get abducted, bro? I don't know. Was he was he doing art like that before? Just look at the art, bro. Look at the art. Yeah. People from this planet, are they able to even think like that? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't Because know. hey, I got a couple tattoos on me that he had did fucking like 6 months after the abduction. Yeah. And and it it wasn't the same, bro. Like when he came back, that shit was like he went from a graffiti artist to fucking Bro, where is your mind at? Oh, really? And did you Bro, ever, he went, did you ask he, him about the experience? Oh, I told his mama. And what'd she say? What did she have to say? Uh, me and her, I'm, well, I'm tight with the family. So, like, after that, like, we really became homies yeah. and shit. And, like, tight, you know, tight. Like, I, I, I know his mom. I could call his mom and dad right now without him. You know, she rented me a house two different times. So, like, I know the fam bam. And uh, so one day she fucking, she came up to me and, and, you know, she came to a grocery store I was working at and we were talking, gave her a hug and shit. And and I forgot what led to what, but I brought it up. I was like, I still think he got abducted. That's crazy. That, what was his explanation? Did he ever say anything or did you guys not even bring it up or? Oh, I bring it up all the time. What did he say? He, He swears to this day he was there the whole time. He said he was there the whole time. The whole time. And even like, so even like, let's just say you do take a hallucinogenic, right? Your mind's not going to fucking, especially one that only lasts four hours. It's not going to play tricks on you for 10, right? So let's just say you want to use that as your excuse. Well, yeah, you were tripping. Yeah, motherfucker. But that shit has a window and shit, right? You weren't there before that window. You weren't there after that window. Like, no, you weren't there. So you guys are walking to the the room and this dude just... So right, left, I don't know. We get there, he's not there. That's that that's crazy, dog. That's just like I don't know. And 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 it and it's like the levels that he ascended to. Yeah. I mean Are you talking about like his artwork only, or was there yes, other shit bro. that that was well and your brain and your brain has to operate that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, bro, you can't go from being like, you know, a street tagger to like probably one of the baddest artists on the planet. I mean, he probably is. There are probably very few people that you can count on both hands that are on this planet today that can do what he does. Yeah. His shit is dope. Uh, yeah, that's crazy, man. That That's just like, you know. It, I mean, his, his art is global. And in his followers, it, it's a cult-like following, bro. Like, his shit is dope, dude. And every one of them probably feels that energy that we just spoke about yeah and previously in our episode man it's crazy because i just think of like shit that could happen like let's say okay if you're if you're listening to this or watching this and you're like all these dudes are full of shit or whatever you know it's just crazy though because you don't know and you know one of the things is that's crazy say he did and and there's say one of two scenarios right he did get abducted he didn't let's say he did it's crazy. And I'm, and, I, and I'm gonna make and I'm gonna make the listeners a deal because I don't know if he's really because he's such a big figure and um you know he's relevant and, and he's on that scene. I don't necessarily know if he wants that story getting out. So somewhere along in the next couple of episodes, maybe I'll promote his fucking uh, IG or his website or something. And if you guys want to connect the dots, that's cool. Okay, um, that's that's got, cool. We, we did. De- we definitely want to give him some love. I just don't know if necessarily, you know, it's not like because I, I, I'm not going to release this type of information without at least talking to him first yeah. and put him. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel you. And um, but what I'm thinking is, Doug, what who's to say, Doug? Like you could get fucking abducted, or something, or have an encounter, not even abducted, right? Say that a fucking alien shows up at your pad. It's just like they could even have some men in black type shit where you don't remember the encounter. You know, and just like that girl was saying in that video, say it lasted nine, ten hours, right? But in his mind, it was fucking like fifteen minutes or something, you know, or or the encounter lasted 
in alien time, you know, fucking three minutes or but something. But again, but again, but again, that's the unknown, you know, and can they rewind it to the time before it even happened? So maybe, you know, and again, I don't know if he really got abducted. I'm just, I'm just making a good story out there on some facts that, you know, yeah. what I told you yeah. is real. Like that's real shit. I'm not just making that shit up for the show. Like that's real shit. But again, does that mean that it absolutely happened? Of course not. You know, yeah. I wasn't there. I didn't see him fucking get beamed up like Scotty and fucking. I didn't I didn't win I didn't witness all that shit. Yeah. I'm just telling you that if you look at the fucking before and the after and you listen to my story and connect the dots like fucking Voltron, it's a good one, bro. I'm just it is what it is. Yeah. It's it's you know, and that's one of the things that I think like you said earlier, it's about having like faith, right? That's the whole point. Is that you right. don't know like when it comes to even when it comes to you know, this kind of shit or Jesus or whatever, you don't know. So that's where the faith part comes in. And it's just crazy. I just wish dog that like at some point we would be able to say we do fucking die. And I'm like, can you just, if we, if we die and we go to this place, like they say you do, can I just get some questions answered? And you just tell me fucking facts, hundred percent. This is, this is true. This is not true. This is true. You know? Well, that's what Christina says, bro. And here, I'm going to just, you know what? While we're on here, without putting his name on blast, I'm going to show some of his shit. And you guys can tell me what you think. Well, I mean, look at that shit, bro. Yeah. No, this is, this is, I'm thinking some of the shit that you've, um, that I, I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. I don't know, dog. It's just, it's just crazy that, that there could be like, or not could be. I feel like there definitely is shit out there that we're not in tune with. We're fucking, just mowing our lawn and fucking you know and we don't even know well well humans i hate to say it bro but but tell me i'm wrong humans want to always think that everything is all about us yeah 100 percent. the world was created for us the stars are for us god is for us i mean the way we disparage even animal life like their life's not as important as ours you know they, we don't know that when they die, if their energy doesn't become as strong as our energy when we die, like we really don't know that. Yeah. Just because you're you're the dominant species on the planet doesn't necessarily make you the better one. Yeah. You always had someone in the schoolyard who can kick your ass, but that doesn't mean they weren't a piece of shit. I um, you know what? I have a question. If you you talked about yes. mushrooms, Un have you ever? I I know there's a, a period you know that they last or whatever. Have you ever okay. fell asleep on mushrooms? And if you did, how was was it any different than a typical, you know, sleep session for you? Never within that period. Yeah. I never took them like, oh, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> if they were good and if they were good and they worked, yeah, you were in for a little ride. So sit back and enjoy. Cause, Cause uh, see, I've you, heard you know. I've heard I've heard multiple um I've heard multiple descriptions of what shrooms do and make you feel like and shit and i've heard one dude say that they just kind of it, like emphasize colors and shit but not like no. not necessarily depends on what you eat bro and and at the same time depends i guess on the the amount of you have right the milligrams. Well, and the type do you got the golden caps do you got the the white ones with the little purple on the inside that have the fat stems because the stems on those make you think and you get into a body high like you start thinking your whole life, but them little golden caps, especially again, are you eating more caps than you're eating stems? Because if you eat four caps and a stem, you're more likely to be bubbly and have fun versus if you eat four stems and a cap, you're more likely to fucking analyze life and fucking think about shit. Oh, see, so I didn't know. There, I didn't know that. I just, there's, there's a lot of variables and, and, you know, there's a lot of different mushrooms that, that get you, uh, that make you, they make you hallucinate. So, what type did you take? Did you eat the stems? Did you eat the caps? What's the amount you ate? Did you microdose? Did you eat a half ounce? Because I'll tell you this much, you eat an eighth, a quarter, or a half ounce of any some potent-ass mushrooms, yeah, you ain't going to talk like that. I'll tell you that. You're in for a ride. Yeah. You'll pull out of it. It's not like you're in for a permanent ride, but yeah, go ahead and eat you a fucking quarter of some fucking golden caps and call me in the morning. I know. Um, damn. Like, you know what I heard? I was listening to Burt Kreischer's um, podcast. And he had his daughter on and Whitney Cummings, right? Whitney Cummings. and uh, I like Whitney Cummings. So, yeah. So, it was her and I'm coming on Whitney's and his daughter. And okay. they, Whitney was asking his daughter um, about, like, the kids and what they're experimenting with and shit. 
And she was saying, at least like in her group, they're, Girls they're both, I guess. Um, yeah. They're experimenting Definitely. more with like they're smoking like a little bit of weed here and there and shit. But right. rather than like doing coke and shit, like I feel like when we were younger and shit and, and not even younger, I feel like now you still know a handful of people that are doing coke and shit but i guess since these kids <laughs> handful <laughs> fucking half a socal bro that's the la does well, bro well she was saying and i guess i mean this is this is kind of cool because she was saying that a lot of people like in her friend group are they're sticking to fucking weed and like mushrooms and shit shit that's more organic because the, well, good all, all the fucking um coke and shit is getting laced with fentanyl and people it are is. dying left and right so and it's cool dog I, I think what's cool about that is that these kids, they're going to fuck around with shit, right? Like fucking kids do. But at least they have the maturity enough to be like, hey, if we're going to fuck with some shit, let's fuck with some shit that's straight out of fucking Mother Earth and not could be laced with but you fentanyl, still, but you, you know? But you still got to have you a good connect, though. You still got to have someone that's plugged with someone that's getting a Home Depot bucket and they're growing them at their house mm-hmm. because you want to make sure that you're still getting it straight from the source. Anytime that motherfucker changes hands... You're at risk. Yeah, no, hundred. You know what I mean? 100%. So they so can dip it, it in something, you know, fucking some kind of yeah. liquid or some shit. So if if you truly are, that's a good. That's California sober in my book. So if you truly are just on mushrooms and weed and shit, God bless you. But make sure you know the grower. Yeah, no. 100%. Make sure that that shit's not changing hands three, four, five times before you get it, because I don't care what you're trying to do. If if you're not going like in Cali, you can get the weed from the store if it's on the shelf and you buy it from the store and you got a receipt. It's good and it's safe. And as long as you don't do too much, you'll be just fine. And uh, as far as your mushrooms go, you just want to make sure you know who to get that shit from. You don't want to, I can't even tell you as a kid before I had a good connect, Mm -hmm. how many fucking wet mushrooms and this mushroom that I ate and the shit didn't do nothing to me or fake acid. We took acid and it wouldn't, it didn't work right. Fake acid. Well, yeah. Well, that's how I fried for the first time. Like I grew up with some gangsters and I would get it from them and like, first couple of times that shit didn't work because they were giving us i don't know for whatever reason it didn't work yeah and i don't know if they're ripping us off or what they were doing so you know it was like two or three times and it didn't work and then i remember i had a little bit i had like one or two hits on me and i was at school at high school in ninth grade and fucking i was like and i had heard a rumor that the cops were searching people and shit so i was like well fuck it this shit's bunk anyways i don't really want to go walk up and try to throw it in the trash if they're searching people i'm just going to eat the shit and flick the foil down the fucking down the fucking carpet in the in the classroom yeah and and uh, like like a bubble gum wrapper, you know what I mean? Like it was double mint. And so I ate the shit, dude. In like first period, and by the time fourth period kicked in, homie, I was like, "Whoa!" You ever took that shit? No, that's why I'm. That's why I'm fascinated by it because because shit uh, like psychedelics and shit like actually like intrigue me and shit. So shit like that, like 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 coke and shit like that shit. Like I don't know, it's like whatever. But like this shit where we can actually get into your mind and I feel like help you fucking tap into some well, other shit, you know? Well, you, you train, you, tra- you train yourself. So like that day, even when, when I, when it kicked in, right. Mm-hmm. I remember it kicked in in fourth period and I couldn't wait for the period to end. Cause I'd never felt that before. It wasn't smoking weed, dude. It was like, you could hear, like, I could hear every single little conversation in the room, bro. It was like, there was like. 15 or 20 conversations going on and it was almost like i was tuned into every one and then at some point if you opened your eyes and looked at them you felt like they were all looking at you and it was like oh, crazy man. oh so, man that's so crazy the fucking, bro the bell rings right i remember the bell rings and shit we were like basic math ninth grade i was a fucktard so i was in like basic math it wasn't even algebra she was like still Doug, your math fucking... class your math class was called uh, math it was yeah bro it was math <laughs> and it wasn't even in all caps like that was the one class on your schedule that started with a capital m lowercase a t h and shit bro. <laughs> hey what math and, class do you have dog i have math fucker i'll just be a math I'll just be bro. a math oh that's funny. y'all know that teacher quit playing with me all i gotta do is say his name and you know i'm stupid oh that's so funny <laughs> yeah anyways i was so i was in that class dude and i remember at uh 11 10 15 30 i don't remember i was in clothes high at that point i remember the bell rings right and boom lunch cracks off and i just remember i'm in the hallway homie and i'm walking and when it opens the door just swings open like a flower opened it went and i walked through that motherfucker and it was the corridor and the corridor led to the amphitheater and if i thought i heard everyone's conversation in the classroom damn it 
Oh boy, I was losing my mind. I'm walking in. It was all, dude. I'm just walking through. Yeah, it was cuckoo. crazy. Kikui, kikui. Kikui. Look at me. Oh, look at my tits. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I had a banger last night. Oh, fuck. Hey, you got some weed? Hey, bro. Uh, can I get some of that acid? It was like, it was wild shit. So I jam, right? I'm like, I was like, I got, I got it. So I'm like, okay, blinders, right? What? Remember what's Chris Rock do? La 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 la. Where you being your shit? I'm, I'm I basically, I didn't do that, but I'm just tuning out, dude. And I went home, bro. I walked home. I was like two and a half miles from home and shit. I walked my ass home at like fucking noon, and I had to just, I had to go let it wear off at home, bro. Like it was too much. Really? Did you tell any of your buddies or anything? Like, were you like? Oh, I told all my buddies. That was great. So were they all like? Was anybody fucking with you? Or no? I'm saying like at the time when you were at school, were you telling any of the homies and shit? Like you said, you were on your way to fucking um, lunch nope. and shit. So you were going through nope, all this you... shit, fucking just in your they, head they... by yourself. Why well, I used to touch on some chick in like uh, that that M A T H class, but uh, and so I had her in the back, right? We were in the same class, and she used to put. Remember the day of the parka, bro? The what? The parka, the long fucking jacket with the hood, the fucking starter jackets, the parka. Oh yeah, yeah. So we used to put them over our laps and fucking scoot our shit together. Oh yeah. So, anyways, we did all that, and that kind of distracted me a little bit. But um, at no, none of my homies. That girl was in the class, but uh, no one else was in there. And uh, so fucking when the bell rang, dude, I'm just trying to get the fuck out of there and go home. I was looking for the homies. I was like, you know what? I'm going home and smoking weed and trying to take me a nap. Yeah. Then I couldn't, you know, that shit. Last, when you take that shit, it lasts for like a good solid eight hours at least if you're lucky. Yeah. So I think I didn't even go to sleep that night. I mean, I slept that night, but I just went home, was more comfortable. No one was talking no more. I think I threw on like Matlock or, or fucking. You could uh, you put on court. Matlock. And you you can fucking hear the producers and the fucking director talking behind the scenes and shit. Uh, no, no, it's like, no, hey, you know what it was shit, like? Man. And on, honest to God, bro, like what it was like is fucking that's when you had the little pet dog, your dog over there. And you think that fucker's talking too, and he's not. But you're just like, what the fuck? Like every little noise and shit, you're looking around and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. that was my first time. It was wild shit. I was 14. That's crazy. That fuck, dog. That's just like, I don't know. I'm 34 and still haven't done that shit, but. That's just crazy. And you know, and you know what? And and I'm not going to tell you to do it because I haven't done any of that shit. Like I tell these stories and that's cute and that's great. But let me give you some context. I was under the age of 18. Like I only think I did it once after 18. And if I did, it was at 18. No kids, lived at home, no real responsibility. Like at that time I was in school, but shortly after that, bro, I was on home studies. So it's one thing when you're, 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 altering your mind with no real responsibilities it's another thing when you know you got to pick up kennedy at fucking 10 o'clock the next morning yeah no for sure i mean just that it's a have, whole different ball game we have um fucking her her open house tomorrow where we gotta go meet her teacher and shit you know so like right. it's a lot different like you said when you're fucking when you're a kid and you're just like well, well you just made you just you, you made the point like so are you going to shroom tonight and stay up till 4 a.m.? Yeah, yeah. Probably not. And probably not a good idea. No. But you got priorities tomorrow, you know? Yeah. No, I fucking, dog, I got a fucking busy ass weekend already. I'm just like, fuck. But, Me too. But, but I got a good weekend. Yeah. Got well, same, dog. I, the only thing I'm like kind of a little bit like, where I'm like, damn it, because there's a big ass fight this weekend, right? By the time you guys are watching this shit, it already happened. So, oh, fuck. Can you believe what happened in UFC 277? Fucking crazy. Well, for me, I have on Saturday UFC 277 where I want to watch a lot of the fights. I'm hella fucking stoked about. It's not a fight night. Who's fighting? It's um Juliana Pena and fucking um, Amanda Nunez, and then okay. um Kai I'm Kai Kara France and fucking Brandon Moreno. Me, That's gonna be me a dope and Ethan ass. gonna watch that. No, th there, there's the some, there's gonna be some good ass fights, and the main card starts at seven. Well, we have um, really the main card does. Yeah, the main card starts at seven. Nunez or what? Um, no, the main the main fight card. So the main like five or six fights. Oh, uh, so she's still fighting at eight thirty nine. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, she'll be fighting okay. probably yeah close to even if it's at seven. Hey. I would say around ten ten thirty even. What's up? I can't hear you. Send me a link. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, see, um, so they're gonna, that's going to be going on. I also have um, one of my my really good friends, his daughter is having a, a birthday party. And then oh, um, we're going to have another 90s themed party we have to go to. So all in the same day. So oh, that's that's a lot, bro. So let me see. I'll, I'll say 
I'll say this though. I gotta I gotta take a moment to give shout out to Tip Dog, Woodchuck, Mito. Yes, hang on, hang on, hang on, all right. Hold on. In the middle of my shout outs? Bro? Yeah, Doug, I'm sorry. I just got asked to kick back for a second. No, I got a shout out to Mito, Tip Dog, Woodchuck, Augustina, little Ethan. I've had some visitors lately, man. People be coming to see me up here and I feel blessed. You know, I'm the one that moved away, but yet uh everyone got my back. Bo, Isaiah. Mm-hmm. You know, little Bo, fucking uh, everyone can come up here to see me, and I fucking Hooter came up here. Yeah, both of them. Both of who? You say Hooters came? No, Hooter and he brought the Rooter because he had to uh, help me put in a garbage disposal. So shout out Hooter and the Rooter. Yeah, well, um, cool, Doug. I got. I just got to give one shout out. Um, my homie Jose. He fucking um, he was hitting me up. He, I guess, he was on a road trip with his wife. And he said they were putting us on. So shout out to them. He was all asking me about yeah. you. He's like, hey, is uh Elka Kui famous? I'm like, now yeah. he is, dog. We're all famous yeah. now, you know? Cause, so because the actor show. Yeah. So um, yeah. And I was telling him about your shit and your your record label and all that shit. And so he thought that shit was cool. So shout out to Jose. That's the only shout, shout out Jose. I got for this week. Um and shout you out, know? huh? Shout out some some stick man, some Luis. Yeah, Who got, you got, got a shout out to fucking um to all of them, dog. To fucking the my. I am key. I am key. Funky Jason monkey. in Tampa. Yeah, where's Jason in Tampa, bro? Jason, where you at, bro? I've been seeing. I've, I've been seeing him in the chat, so he's been there, dog. So, but is, is he chatting on our shit? Nah, nah. Oh come nah, on, nah. Jason. He was. He was a, he Shout was out a, to. Uh, uh, he was in and he was out for us. So after show, but later. Here we go. Episode number one forty. We got into some some funky shit here, dog. We didn't even hit on a whole lot of Kevin on rich shit, but. Oh. But we do have um, we have a lot more coming up for you guys. So after show, but later, make sure you check us out on all social media. After show, BL. Look look for us on YouTube, Facebook. And, listen to the show. What's up? And look for some some rapid episodes because uh, this dude's gonna go on vacation for a minute. So we're gonna try to crank out some fucking crank out some heaters and uh, get them to you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we, we'll have some episodes. We, we're gonna try not to miss a week, even though I'm I'm gonna be down for. He's gonna go to Punya Town. From what they tell me, and, they tell me two and, weeks. And and Meco and Meckleville. Definitely, we'll be doing that. So after show, but later, episode number one forty. Your boys D El Kukui. We will see you in episode number one forty one. I know we have baseline tray ready, right? On the road to the riches, cause it's all about the paper. Now buckle up your seats and prepare for the journey. Let the music ease your soul. Grab a spliff and start burning. Uh, relax with us and take a trip to the heavens and come and spend a day in the seven five seven. Yeah, no.